G'day, and welcome to AOS Coach. In this video, I'm going to look at unit sizes in 3rd edition Age of Sigma using the reinforced units rule. I'm going to highlight how it might influence your list building, provide examples of them in play, as well as highlight some considerations before you start reinforcing your units. In a traditional match play battle using the General's Handbook 2021, an army can use up to four reinforced units in a 2000 point battle. Now this number may change depending on when you're viewing this video, which battle packs you might be using in the event. Uh, this number might change over time, but right now in GBH 2021, we are looking at zero to four reinforced units. So what is a reinforced unit? You reinforce a unit when you increase the unit size from its starting unit size. There is no universal figure because each unit comes at a different size. You might remember this when you buy your boxes from Games Workshop and there's different numbers in each box. Some will come as twos, some will come as fives, twenties. Each of these unit sizes can be found in, in the pitch battle profile in the General's Handbook. As an example, your Stormcast Forminators come in units of two. Your Soul Blight Grave Lords come in units of 5, Daughters of Cain Witch Elves come in units of 10, and your Gloom Spite Stabbers come in units of 20. Now, a battle line unit can increase its unit size by double or triple its size, while units that are not battle line, they can only be doubled in size. When you double your unit size, it counts for one reinforcement point in match play, while if you triple the unit size, it counts as two. If the unit is described as a single model, it can't be reinforced. Now, that's a lot to take in. I will show some examples of how this is going to come into play. So let's look at your battle line first. I am planning to take one or more units of Witch Elves in my Daughters of Cain army. And when I look at their pitch battle profile in my General's Handbook, I'm going to see that they come in unit sizes of 10. Now, knowing that they are battle line, I can take them up to 30 models because I can either double or triple reinforce them. The number 10 is important because when it comes to reinforcing my Witch Elves, that's the number that's gonna tell me what I can reinforce. And when I compare that to say my Canari or my Medusae, it's a different number. So if I take my Witch Elf unit as a small size of 10, it's not gonna count as any reinforcement points and I can include as many of these small unit sizes according to my pitch profile. So if I'm playing a 2000 point game, I can have as many Witch Elves up to obviously the limits of match play. Now, if I was to take a single unit of Witch Elves and I was to reinforce them up to 20, it would count as one reinforced unit. If I was to make that unit of Witch Elves a unit of 30 models, which is a triple its minimum size of 10, it would count as two of my reinforced units. So in my 2000 point match play game of uh, 2000 points, it would count as two of those four reinforced units. If I'm going to reinforce my Witch Elves, that's taking two of my four. Now let's look at an example that is not battle line, and this is going to be my Doomfire Warlocks. Now Doomfire Warlocks come in unit sizes of five, and you'll see that at the bottom of the pitch battle profile, there is no battlefield role for them. So they are not battle line. They're also not leader, they're not behemoth, they're not artillery. They are just non-battle line. If I was to bring in a unit size of five Doomfire Warlocks, it would count as zero of my reinforcement points because it is the smallest or the just the normal size. Now, knowing that it is a non-battle line unit, I can reinforce it once. So if I was to move that from a five to a 10, it would count as one of my reinforcement points. Because it's not battle line and there's no ability to make it battle line, um, I can't triple reinforce it. So I can't actually make it a 15 block of uh, Doomfire Warlocks. I'm only restricted to a maximum size of 10 for this particular unit. Another example of this is my Bloodstalkers here, my Medusae Bloodstalkers. Now, when I look at their pitch battle profile, they come in unit sizes of five. So I could take five Blood Sisters without costing me a reinforcement point because it's the smallest size that it comes in. If I wanted to take 10 Blood Sisters, I would count as one of my reinforced points. So I could move it from five to 10. However, normally I couldn't make it a unit of 15 because it's not battle line. However, if you look at your pitch battle profile, you'll notice at the bottom that it says that Blood Sisters 
can be made into battle iron if the general is a blood rack medusa or a iron scale now what that means is if my general was somebody else let's say it was a hag queen let's say it was just somebody that wasn't either of those two it means that my blood sisters could only be up to a unit size of 10 because i can reinforce it once but if I was to unlock the battle line if criteria by making my general either one of those two models, all of a sudden I've now allowed myself to double reinforce with two of those points to make that a unit of 15. So depending on who your general is going to be, might actually incentivize you to make some of your units larger or maybe even change who is your general. When you think about your reinforcement points, there's going to be both positive and negative ways to think about reinforce units. When I think about increasing the unit sizes and some of the positives that are going to come from that, you're going to get more models that, that can contest an objective in a unit, which is going to be always a good thing. It means that you're going to have likely less drops or less deployments to, and help you determine who goes first because you're putting more of your points in units. So you're, gonna, you're likely going to have less units compared to having more blocks of five blood sisters. But yeah, I might have 30 blood sisters on the table, but I've got uh, you know more of that more units as opposed to them being concentrated in a single block. Many of these units are going to get a bonus um, or extra abilities when they have a certain amount of models. So when you start looking at some of these pitch battle profiles or the war scroll, it will say that, you know, if the if there's a unit of 10 or more or 15 or more, you might get plus one to hit, plus one armor save, two attacks, you know, mortal wounds on, on X. You know, some of these war scrolls will actually incentivize you for having larger models. So um, that's always a good thing. And when you've got a, a large unit, and I think about a, a unit of grots, you know, let's say 60 grots, I'm probably going to be incentivized or it's going to be easier to know where I might want to put down some Battleshock immunity like Inspiring Presence because I want to protect that really big unit. On the other side of the fence though, and you know, some of the risks that come into play by taking large units is that they are indeed at greater risk of taking Battleshock because when I have a, lots of small units of 10 Witch Elves, if a couple run away from Battleshock because they've taken damage, doesn't really matter. But if I make a really large dice roll or there's a lot of negative modifiers to my battle shock and I don't have the ability to put down inspiring presence uh, or for whatever reason I'm, you know, I've, I've used it on somewhere else, all of a sudden I'm going to have extra models slain in that phase that I wouldn't have had to worry if I was running smaller units. When I'm thinking about larger units as well i need to consider how coherency is going to come into play especially when i'm fighting with large units moving them around and keeping them coherent in a block of 40 or 60 is a lot more challenging than in blocks of five and finally it can be harder to contest objectives when you have more of your points concentrated in large blocks of units. Now that sounds counterproductive compared to the positive, right? It's easier to claim an objective. But what happens if you're playing in a battle plan that has six objective points or eight objective points or an objective that moves or disappears? When you have more of your points concentrated in a single unit, you have less area to spread out across the board, which means that it's harder to capture multiple, uh, multiple objectives or to reposition. So just keep that in mind. You know, again, there's pros and cons on either side. Depending on which army I'm running will depend really on do I want to reinforce, double reinforce, triple reinforce? There's certainly a lot of great benefits. Being able to apply a command ability and apply it to a large block of units as opposed to trying to work out which unit gets the command ability. But at the same time, there is a lot of great risk in having these big blocks because they are a lot of points are tied up in a single unit. So I would love to know where you stand when it comes to reinforced units. Do you think about taking reinforced units? Are you going to double reinforce your battle line? Are you just going to be going single reinforcements? Um, how do you handle battle shock when i think about my 60 gloom spike gets grots right that's a big block of bodies how do i keep them battle shock immune because they will run they've got a really low bravery what what happens when i need more than one inspiring presence but i can only use one you know pop it in the comment section i'd love to hear from you where you stand when it comes to your reinforced units Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. 
The conversation will continue over on Discord. So links down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigma conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more sixes.